Okay, in the example we just finished, we had discrete data on one axis, meaning categories, male, female, and we had continuous data on the other axis, meaning numbers. Uh, continuous means they could be anything from zero to a million and anything between, right? Uh, or zero to infinity and anything in between. So we have a column graph. Now the next set of data I want to show you are a little bit different. Um, here we have, once again, something similar. We have heart rate data, but this data is different. I want to show you what's going on on this data table. This is a lot uh, how you would set up a data table for a lot of the experiments we do in Bio 1. Um, here we have minutes of exercise along this axis here, or minutes of jogging in this case. We have R1, R2, and R3. R stands for replication. In any good experiment, you're going to measure more than one person. We saw more than one person measured in this example. We had several males and several females, right? In this example, we also have um, three different people measured, right? So person one, two, and person three. Each one of them ran for 10 minutes, and every minute we checked their pulse. So what is going to happen here is that means we have continuous data for both axes. Our dependent and independent variables are both numbers. Our dependent variable is pulse rate. It depends on the minutes of jogging. So minutes of jogging is our independent variable, all right? Now, in order to graph this data, the first thing we're going to want to do um, is we're going to want to, um, I'm going to copy this column over here because this is the way I like to graph. So I'm going to um, paste minutes of jogging here. All right, so here we have average. So we need to calculate the average heart rate for someone who's been running for one minute. How do we do that? Well, we put in an equal sign. We type the word average, open a parenthesis, and we highlight the data for replicate one, two, and three. For one minute, close the parenthesis and hit enter. So the average pulse rate for someone just beginning to jog, uh, this is probably actually the control data, this is probably the resting heart rate as they began to jog. So right at the beginning of minute one was 82.6 beats per minute. Minute two, equal sign, type in the word average, open the parenthesis, highlight those three numbers, close the parenthesis, enter, there you have 103 beats per minute. So you can do that for all 10 minutes, but I'll give you a, a clue here. Uh, you can also just copy and paste. So if I copy and paste uh, this cell, I'll just copy it and um, highlight all of these numbers here and paste. Boop. It'll do it for me. It'll copy the formula for average rather than the actual average itself. So there are the averages for um, all 10 minutes of jogging for all three individuals. So to... to uh, um, graph this, um, I'm going to copy this title here, down here, it may not really matter, um, but I'm going to highlight both of these columns and I'm going to go to insert, and what we're going to do here is we're making kind of a line graph, but I don't want to use the line graph feature, I want to use the scatter plot feature, it gives us more options and it makes a nicer graph. Um, so what you can do is um, I like to pick, um, it doesn't really matter which one of these two, but scatter plot with lines and markers. So the line that you see there is sort of the trends in the data, meaning overall, what was the data doing uh, from beginning to end? That's what the lines are. It's a connect the dot kind of a line. Um, okay, other things we need to do now, we need to delete this title because we never put those on our graphs. I'm going to get rid of this grid system here. Um, and then the other things that we're going to work on are going to be axis titles. So you want your axis title to be nice and clean like this. You don't want it to overlap with your numbers. You might have to fiddle with it to get it to look right. Make sure your work looks good before you turn it in. Okay, axis title, the x-axis here. That is our um, in any time we graph, whether it's a scatter plot or a column graph, the axis title uh, on the x-axis is going to be our uh, independent variable. So in this case, it's minutes of jogging. Oops. And if there was a unit there, I could put minutes again. That would kind of be redundant. But you could, or you could say time minutes. That would be another way to put a unit on it. Um, how about I do it that way? That way it's clear because I do look for 
uh, uh, labels on your axes. Time, jogging, minutes. Okay, that way I know the unit. Okay, now over here, we're going to uh, put a uh, pulse rate and we're going to say BPM. All right. Okay, so that's how we make, uh, when I tell you to make a scatter plot, that's what I'm referring to. It's more of a line graph using the scatter plot feature in Excel, but that's how we make it. Now, the next set of videos I'm going to make are going to be how we add um, a measure of variability to these uh, air, to these graphs, and then we're going to uh, write figure captions for them. And then you'll have a complete idea of how we make figures for Bio 1. And if you stick with it, this is also how you'll make figures in Bio 2.